so no, no idea. I'm just so eager to see what Pablo looks like tonight. The doctor. <laughs> oh my God. How was your day? Oh my gosh. It was lengthy. I'm in such like mom mode this week because playoffs and Andre had um open house at the high school. Oh man. Yeah, dude. Trying to figure out like his electives and all of that kind of stuff. And then one so I did that and then London is switching middle schools. Remember I told you they redistributed. Mm-hmm. So I had to go to a parent meeting. Oh, at, wow. at but her new school isn't even open yet. It's not even built. So oh, get out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it won't be built until um it won't be built until May. So we can't even take a tour. So all we have right now is pictures. So wow. yeah, it it's crazy. And then conference championship is tomorrow night so and then state playoffs start it's it's mom mode mom Mom life hashtag mom hashtag mom hashtag mom life so i've been hashtag non-mom life for most of this week because it's been winter recess and i have been in isolation just getting work done it's been wonderful i I can't wait um i took off monday and Tuesday for just that purpose so that I can actually get some work. I'm so excited. Like I can't even fully articulate yes. how excited I am to be off of work home by myself working on my business. It's just the quiet crazy. of it all. Ooh, like it's dope. yeah. It's I was like, is dope. this what I got to look forward to come September when all of them are in school? Yes. Oh, this is what you have to yes, Lord. Oh. be lit. I don't like, you know, it's so like, I, it takes programming. Cause I'm, I've been from the beginning, you know, like Annalisa was the first one home with me. And so I was always, ju- I've always been juggling, you know, mm-hmm. baby feedings and breastfeedings and, you know, all That's the rest all of it and being on a call. So it's like when Bryce went to preschool this year, I was like, oh, what, do, what does one do with two and a half hours of their time? I don't know what Girl, this is like anymore. It's, it's about, about to be a to damn be... bacchanal. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back, people, to the Ask Serena Live after show. It is episode seven. Lucky seven. number seven. How is this even possible? Go. Like, how it's amazing it's awesome i don't even post on my own social media this regularly i'm so proud i know (laughs) teamwork makes the dream work um so i am your host uh janine truitt chief innovations officer for talent think innovations llc based here in new york and my firm focuses on workforce planning digital transformation and tech advisory if you're ever interested in what I do at scale, you can find out more at www.talentthinkinnovations.com. And I'm going to turn it over to my co host Hello, everyone. I am Sarah Morgan. I am the Chief Excellence Officer of Buzzaroni LLC, which is a people management consulting and coaching organization based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Paul McNeil. I'm the founder of MB Usable Security. Uh, We look at marketing and cybersecurity analytics and making usable cybersecurity solutions for small and medium sized businesses. Um, On Twitter, I'm UsableSecGuy, and uh, I'm just happy to be in the conversation. (laughs) Aww, Doc. Uh, I got a feeling. I got a feeling the doctor about to get unhappy though. I know. I know. That's why we. That's why. That's why we got to start off. Start off with these extra points before I start trying to wear me down. So I, I have to say that with the fake news, black men don't cheat. Whatever, man. <laughs> I, I, I have to tell you, your elevator pitch has gotten so much better every week. Every, every week, week it just gets better. better. I feel like the practice is helping. Like it's, it's just it's, flowing. It's coming. Yes. I'm trying to trying to improve. But um, also, I've been doing a lot more on the sales front. 
uh, the last couple of weeks as well, trying to get some new hey, clients. And so I'm still in my field. Yeah, I see you out here yeah. with webinars and such. We ain't we're, gonna go we're working. That we're we working. talk about we're working. out here working though. I see we're working. You. We're working. money. I like it. Yeah. Yes. So guys, emotional vulnerability. Let go. Yeah. yeah. Like Let how go. much of an how much of an issue is this for you? Like, I mean, do you struggle with it? Let's go back to taboo acts of love. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, you want to talk about You want to go back to that? Right. Let's, awesome. get this, let's, let's hit a repeat. But we, I mean, we can touch it slightly again, and I'll get there. But do we struggle with this? What say you? Yeah, um, I, think, I think everyone does. I mean, and like, so for, I can speak for myself. I can't represent all men. Um, but you know, coming from a house where I'm half Southern American, half West Indian, you know what I mean? And you're black and feelings, emotions, I, we would have discussions here and there, but it was, you know, very much so, you know, you say your piece and kind of, you know, suck it up and keep pushing, um, things are out of your control. You just have to deal with them. And so I think that that manifests itself later on where you're kind of in this mode where you have relationships or you have situations where maybe you don't fully understand what you're feeling and you're not able to have those excessively deep um, connections with someone because you don't have those connections with yourself. So how can you hook up to someone else and you're not really in tune with what's going on internally? Um, so that's that's on that. It definitely yes short answer but then the question becomes okay so now you're aware of this what do right. you do at that point that's the a, part that that's that, that right where, there. Like, that's where i get stuck because i think that there are a lot of and i know we put you on the spot and, and yeah. asking you to kind of speak for all men right but deal with it so <laughs> that's why all men <laughs> That's why, that's why we're gonna just take the stance that everyone don't cheat we're just gonna take the best of the of the gender and, uh, so, but what do you, you what, do, what then do you do about that? Like you've reached this point where you've realized that, uh, oh snap, I'm, I'm emotionally disconnected. Like I'm emotionally unavailable to myself and then therefore to other people. What, what, what's the plan from that point? Because I feel plan? like, because I feel like there's, there's this, like, what, like this idea that women just have to accept your emotionally stuntedness and unavailability i feel like that's become that the expectation and that to me is madness so here what what are we doing what and, we doing? and and this is this is where i struggle with it so i mean let's because you you talked specifically about the black male experience let's let's go there because this is this is what is much more salient for most of us here right um i don't i don't i don't know what the white man experience is i've never dated one never been married to one i i don't know but i do know black men right um my daddy black my brother black every man i've dated has been black my husband's black so there um i get the the blockages right and a lot of it happened a lot of it is past generationally right it stems from like slavery you know and just how like black men had to be you know kind of the 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 pillar of strength for their families and you know they they, they couldn't let people see them break and then i think somewhere along the line we got different versions of that as generations went on but like i'd like to think that in 2019, you know, we're 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 far we're we're pretty far removed from this phenomenon now, right? We know some things, right? We we fuck some shit up, <laughs> right? And we know what and works. Women get what equal doesn't. pay for equal work. You well, no, we're not there yet. We're not, we're not there. Not there. <laughs> we're not there yet. No, but that no, but that's what I'm saying. No, I'm saying it's the, the same. Like it's the same. It's right. the same. Right? Yeah. So like, it's like you know. I guess what I struggle with is I get if you didn't see it growing up, it's hard to know what that looks like. But then, you know, that, that, to what age do we allow for that excuse? Right. 
if, if it's an excuse at all. And I don't mean to be pejorative about calling it an excuse, but at what point does a person, male or female, but we're talking male here, wake up, look at himself in the mirror and say, this is failing me. This, this lack of me being able to be vulnerable is failing me. And more so than that, it's, it's toxic to the person I'm with. And so I'm going to make a different decision, right? So like for me, like I said on the show, I, I took a holistic view of myself and recognized the areas in which I was putting up walls, blockages, right. and that took vulnerability to do. But then I went at it and I fixed it. Right. And I'll continue on that. Like healing is not linear. So foreseeably I'll, I'll keep coming back to it until I fully heal it. But the fact is, is that I try, I find guys are just like, take it, not you, Paul, not you, Pablo, but like, this is me. This is all I have to give you. And you should just, you know, you should just be my ride or die chick and accept the fact that I'm going to be an empty shell for all our days together. This this Listen, is but, but but uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go hard devil's advocate right now. I'm gonna uh-oh. go hard. And the, man, the devil don't need no advocate. I wish we had to the like chat. The devil's alive. Yeah. He don't need no advocate. Right? <laughs> but no, I'm gonna go hard and in, in this other direction. So a couple of things. So you know like, you've got the whole Maslow's thing, right? Pyramid, right? Of needs. So you've got Oftentimes, sex, self-actualization and all those fun things are at the top. A lot of times, you just don't have time. Like, you go, oh, man, this would be really cool if I could dig deep into my feelings and figure out who I am as a person. But uh, I got these kids and this girl, this <laughs> wife, or whatever, that need this cash. So you know what? I'm going to go out here and do what I need to do so that my girl can have some kind of, of time to actualize and feeling and hopefully some of that will rub off on me and then we know uh, we'll figure it out as it goes but when we get to some other stage whatever his goal is whatever his 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 um uh responsibilities are when he gets to that level and he go okay maybe or right, prime example jay-z you see jay-z now now jay's talking all kinds of rich people talk every time he's in an interview i realized that i was hurt and that that person is just hurt and I want to hug young me. And I want to go to the hood where all the drug dealers are and have conversations. And he was not talking that on reasonable doubt because he has certain goals and responsibilities, dreams and desires that he, so it wasn't as high as priority. Now he's chilling. All of a sudden he could go to therapy. He's out here bonding and trying to get forgiveness, putting out apology albums and, you know, making money and making uh, makeup albums with his wife. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they, they so get I, I, I agree. I agree. However, that, that epiphany, that <clears throat> evolution, that transformation happened as a result of Beyonce getting ready to leave that ass, right? right. So right. Lemonade right. was the whole kind of, you know, eulogy for that relationship she was trying to burn everything down to the ground like the good virgo that she is and jay-z realized i he was not about oh, that shit. life and he yeah. wasn't oh, about to lose, lose all the, right yeah let me and not lose my good the, thing he, he did what most of us would love for the the rest of the men to do he perked the fuck up realized he that, that he needed to get out of his own way and he mm-hmm. did the work right the problem is, is there's a good portion of other men that, you know, they don't got a Beyonce, but they got a good woman still. And uh-huh. they're still talking about, I don't know. I mean, I'll bring home the bacon. I mean, I'll make sure you take <laughs> care of. I mean, yeah. you're going on vacations. Like, what you need? The voice. Uh, the voice. What you need? I what mean, more do you need? <laughs> I don't know what you're asking for. It sound like this young the man boy right now. Is the best. <laughs> you live a life. You sound good. I mean, I don't, is she hungry? Is she alone? She living her life. I can't stand you. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe he should go missing for two or three nights. Maybe then she could have some. I don't know. I, you know, I, don't know, I, I, I guess. Care. I guess what I, I, I go ahead. 
so I would challenge it with this, right? Her being in a space where she was ready to leave means that there was some kind of growth and self-actualization on her own part as well. Mm. Until mm -hmm. Lemonade came out, they were still together. He didn't just start doing stuff when she realized herself, which we always like to talk about. But the reality is whatever <laughs> was going on there was going on for some time. And she reached a point where she had done her growth and stuff like to be a catalyst for him to then go you know what i need to do this real work i need to do x y and z however oh. a lot of times women aren't even in that space they like to do a lot of like instagram uh depth and stuff and oh i'm here and two of my feelings they don't really be in tune with their feelings because if their dude showed up and cried in front of them or something uh they would be to the next one movement especially the new york new jersey girls Oh no! No, you did not. No, we not No, we not doing that. No, but no, but in all seriousness, in, in all seriousness, especially in in our communities, there's a certain level of masculinity that I feel when it's truly um, exhibit. Like if you go under that bar, women aren't always as accepting of that as possible. So, a lot of dudes in the friend zone who are open and emotionally aware, and you're just like, mm, but this dude over here who don't talk to me and don't hit me up and isn't texting me hello, beautiful, every morning. Let me go check out what's going on on that side. So you, so you have you have the the what the mind wants, and then you have the reality, right? Yeah, yeah. And dudes are gonna do whatever whatever it is to survive. Like if I know I'm gonna get more girls continuing to be more aloof and seeming less thirsty which everything can be thirst you know yeah. um so like 2010 everything is thirsty you know hell the door oh he's so thirsty you know so if that's going to happen well what am i working on this for it's not going to get me the results that i want so that uh, we you know we've we've had i hate throwing generational buckets but i i have yeah. to honestly say that i've heard that's that true, that's i know that's true but that is definitely your generation because that's all you have. For me, I like the more of that, the better. And I think yeah, most agreed. women my age feel that way. Like I am the mm -hmm. child, still love a man to hold the door. I, I like I I expect that. I like that. Um, I don't know where we um when we got to the point where that wasn't clutch to do, like is to show your affections or to make it seem like you're interested. I, I don't know when that happened but yeah that's definitely a generational thing and you guys are frozen i don't know what's going on you sound robotic right now oh no she's gone oh she and came back she's i'm the back so she's i'm back. the host now oh. <laughs> 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 wow just like that just like that just like that. Look she's at gone me. and Look guess at what me. i am the host <laughs> and Power right. much? Power much? Um, <laughs> no, everything you say is valid. I mean, I, I think it's true, you know, to some degree. Yeah, I, I agree too. I think we, especially the part about evolution because, and I think that for Jenny and I, we're speaking from a place of having done a lot of, of that reflection and the hard like healing work. Mm -hmm. And so you want someone, when once you've reached that point, you want to be with someone who is on that plateau with you because it's such a wonderful place to be that mm -hmm. that sense of wholeness and that you know complete willingness to just emote you know as is necessary not that you're like a walking you know cry bag <laughs> but that you're just not afraid to <clears throat> say how it is that you're feeling um that you know to do the work that it takes to get to that space you know you just want to share you want to partner with people and particularly in romantic situations with somebody who can match that energy um and when that's lacking and when there's no willingness for it it's just like come on man you know so but i i definitely see what it is that you're saying as far as you know women have to have to do that too and have to not judge dues for it but i do i'll i also agree with with Jenny that that that's a that's a millennial thing. That's a young thing in general. Like I feel like our generation had that had that moment. Everybody wanted to thug. Everybody wanted to rough yeah. neck. Yeah. You know? So you know we had our moment too. Um, but that right. has passed. And um, I know I I'm probably the only one 
he's the only reality TV junkie among us. But not at all. Not. I'm right here. Pop Except for so the right there. Remember, so that's how we watch, started on Twitter. Yeah. Do you watch? I don't know if either one of y'all watch Black Ink Chicago. No, nah, I haven't heard about that one. You about to mess so, up my whole work week. Yeah. So this past season, if you know, you don't have to go back to the beginning to watch. It'll explain itself. But this past season, like these are dudes who grew up obviously in Chicago, like South Side of Chicago, like hood, hard hood dudes, tatted, you know, from head to toe. And they are having some of the most emotionally vulnerable conversations about forgiveness for, you know, things that they've done to offend each other in the business and and depression and suicidal thoughts. Like these are tatted up. Chicago South Side Chicago dudes and they are just being completely emotionally vulnerable it's probably like some of the most beautiful shit I've seen on TV damn I'm yeah. like I, mean, no, I, mean, I don't even mess castle. with reality no. TV but you kind of convince me no there's, there's this season in particular yeah, has just been like superb in terms of just their willingness to be emotionally vulnerable with each other as 30 something year old black men just bananas and i've just i've watched it just in awe of just their willingness to be vulnerable and i i hope that other people watch it only because i think modeling that type of behavior helps people to understand and never you know to your point paul like never losing the masculinity of themselves mm -hmm. in it but really talking about the difficulties and the deep dark places and and getting to the path of forgiveness with one another for things it's been dope so you know i think that it's possible but but i would agree it's got to be modeled and you know we gotta we gotta be in it together definitely so paul i'm putting you on the spot okay oh let's go i'm ready for you for me what is it what does it take what would it take like what are what are the attributes that need to be present like or, or what is the fertile soil that has to be present for you to feel like you can go there with somebody i don't know that's a good question so here's here's my thing you mentioned this earlier too in uh in your show <clears throat> i don't i have a huge trust issues right i don't trust people farther than i can you know come up so Damn. I don't, I don't really trust because I grew up moving around all the time. So we moved a lot and I was always the outsider, whether it was a small town, whether it was a country, wherever it was, so I was always the outsider and you can never know. Like we live in some places where everybody was related, like on some Beverly Hillbilly stuff. I know a lot of people oh, on that show, but we, we lived in like some real small towns. So you'll be out here saying such and such or expressing in a feel, feeling or an emotion about someone and you go, oh, that's oh, my, that's my. That's, that's, the cousin. that's my aunt yeah. mm. that's my this or they might not tell you they just double back and the next thing you know now you gotta face a couple of people at the core or wherever the case is like a whole thing right. so i'm always very very hesitant to reveal stuff um about myself in general um <clears throat> so that that for me that would just be taking the time to like get i don't know just getting to a space where i guess i felt safe enough to to move to that to that kind of place with someone i'll do a lot of self-work but in terms of relying on someone else or really trusting that just takes time um, i'm pretty slow to do that when i do do it you know if there's too much uh um i guess like if i feel like you're judging or it's going and then i just i'll close back up and just uh, like I, you know it's all good we don't need to we don't need this for real. I'll wait till I get my Jay-Z dollars to come out with my feelings. And, uh, and I just retreat. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, like I, I'm not in any rush. Like, uh, Jay-Z, he seems like he all right. He doing his thing. I'll wait till then. Um, and so, and, and then also my focus, and that was one of the reasons why I mentioned that, is my focus is on other things. So I may notice it. And I may read <clears throat> and try to, like, you know, really understand myself here and there, but during what time trying to do this or do the other, I'm trying to put deals together, figure all these other things out. And I think that that's another reason why um, it's interesting that women reach that point sooner. I mean, 
I think society has allowed y'all to have a head start with it as well. Like, as you said, like even down to like, like whether well, you're a big boy, don't cry. And mm-hmm. you know, a girl can cry it out and do whatever she's got to do. So you've got literally all these pre years in the game before you hit the point where you go, you know what? I need to understand myself in that way. Also, even when you didn't fully understand yourself, it was okay to emote. And so yeah. you have a lot of guys that are like hitting 25, 26, like maybe I should think about emoting. So by the time you got 10 years, you're 35, 40. And you're now thinking about it. You know what I mean? Mm, and so, so, cool. so you've cool. got that, you've got got to account for that, um, that disparity also. Yeah. So it might seem slow, but it's really like when you look at those pre-years where it was okay for you to emote before you, you knew why you were emoting, you got kind of had a head start. And then we're just ill like that in general too. Yeah. I mean, God. you know, it's you can say magic. that. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, uh, <laughs> I want, I want to do business with people someday. Paul deal respects women. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sarah anything else <laughs> on this i think you know yeah as far as one of the i remember and i want to ask this because uh, the doc poor doc you on the hot seat tonight but i remember yeah. years and years ago here and i don't even remember who said it hearing somebody say that women trust in categories and men either trust or they don't. Mm. Is that is that true? Is that really true about men? Like, I believe that women do trust categorically. It's like, I trust you with my money, but I don't, I'm not gonna leave you around my man. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's level to, right. like his level, like his level to this shit. Yeah. But, I, but in my experience, I do find that, that men either 100% all the way trust you or they just can't trust you at all is that accurate um i don't know it's good that's interesting i'm trying to think about it i mean i know that there are people that i trust for certain things um but i it may be it may be all or nothing i mean when i really think about it because like i said a lot of times it's one of those situations where you don't open up very quickly so by the time you have done it you're like oh if you already made it through all these different barriers we in there and then when you mess it up, you're just like, mm, I'm good. I was already iffy about this whole opening the gate situation anyway. So you, cool. I think that's part of it. And then the other part, at least I know what, the way I think about it is, I just know a lot of dudes. I just know a lot of grimy dudes. So I know that if you do this small little thing here, you're looking for weakness, you know, like, it, and if you find a chink in the armor, you're going to take, take the whole thing. You know, if I give you an inch, you're going to get a mile you're going to try to take a mile. And so because I don't feel like dealing with the additional yardage, I'm just going to go ahead and shut it down, you know, half a ruler in and we good. Right. Wow. Cause I don't, I don't want to deal with, I don't want to deal with what you're probably going to go ahead and do, or I've seen you do to other people. Yeah. Cause a lot of times at, I don't know. I just feel like because a lot of guys aren't self-aware and a lot of, of, of us aren't, um, society doesn't accept it right and it takes us longer to get there and stuff like that we don't care about it so if i know like oh i'm trying to do this thing and grow as a person but i know that my peers are not trying to make those moves right now that means that you're moving and we're playing by different rules that's a almost like an all or nothing situation right there because the game doesn't hurt the player until he stops playing um hmm. Hmm. that's okay. it when you stop because when you stop if you're at war with people and you all using the same tools and, and weaponry it's kind of a fair fight but then when you go you know what i'm gonna face violence with hugs and peace and stuff that's not <laughs> when you get home you have to be cool with that but it's not the same being you know so if you find out find yourself around a lot of warriors and you trying to write sonnets is not going to rock it's out. A purg- well, you find yourself in a bit of a purgatory mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. what's happening, and I've seen this with some of my male friends, and my vices, 
you are straddling two different frequencies, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to be vibrating higher, but you mess with low frequency, low hanging fruit, low frequency dudes right. and low hanging fruit women. And when that happens, you're going to always revert back to the lower density. It's easier, mm -hmm. right? To live there, mm -hmm. right? And so right. you you almost abandon by proxy any progress you could make. So it's, it's, but like with women, it's a little bit different. Like for me, I know like as I've been going through my own evolution, it's been about like four or five years now, I just shake that low density. So when you're gone, you're gone. Like it's just like, I'm, I, no, mm -hmm. this, this, this I, I have no time for the purgatory. And then suddenly my, my experiences in the world and all of that gets light and fluffy and I end up attracting, you know, the Sarah Morgans of the world and all these other great people. And it's wonderful. Um, but I find like men struggle again, because there's this, this camaraderie that you have to have as a man. Right. And so if your main partners are out here being low frequency dudes or grimy, as you say, Right. Mm -hmm. The inclination is let me straddle a little of the griminess because I need the camaraderie. I can't be yeah, I keep it real. I, right. I can't be a lone soldier out here, you know, writing poetry on clouds <laughs> and them on swans and shit. <laughs> I mean, I, mean <laughs> I just I think I I think um I think part of it is true. I, I think you're you're onto something with the the per like you're in this weird balancing space i mean i experienced that and i'm ho i'm hoping it kind of translates but i experienced that when i like got my degrees and stuff right because i went straight through so i went from one day where i could say any joke that i wanted about whatever to people in my group looking at me differently because now i have a phd same age i said the same joke six months ago and you were rolling but now i say it and it sounds like i'm being condescending now i say it you know and it sounds like wow what's the situation or we're having jokes about uh oh no nah. oh you know what this is a lie this is an after show so we would have some jokes about um one of my friends this happened he um he had a situation where he thought that this girl had gotten uh pregnant and you know we're cracking jokes because while that is not a serious thing it i mean while that's a serious thing Thing and not funny in general this particular young man had a habit of getting in this situation all the time so this is after an extensive period of like come on bro what are you doing so when it happened this time we're just like again good for you i hope she keeps it type of deal so he went down this pathway of like oh well what would you do paul if you're in this situation da 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 da, da. i was like i would get a job and he was like you can't raise a whole family only on part-time work at Taco Bell and such and such and such. And I was just like, I mean, we clown and stuff, but I go get a job. I'm going to be able to like provide for family with benefits and whatnot. Like we, I'm on this different little situation. And it took that like little moment for me to be like, yo, I cannot move my in my career the way that my boys are moving right now. Because this dude is moving with like, a, I'm trying to get on to manager mentality. And I'm like sitting up here with these degrees trying to run some completely different. And so I think that you do have to hit that point, even emotionally, I'm guessing, um, in that space, the same kind of way. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, I guess if I, I must. Guess, yeah. He's like a Grinch. He's like, if I must. Yeah, like, my Grinchy heart. heart I, I want to be that diligent about it. You know, put much effort because it was it was effort because these are my people that I like went through college. You know, we was splitting fish fillets and saltine crackers in between <laughs> days. It was, it, was, it was real. These are the struggle. The struggle, right? struggle. Struggle. Struggle crew. It was a struggle Super struggle crew. crew. And and to leave it was like, yo, I'm not trying to abandon, but everybody's not growing with you. Um, so for me it was my career in education initially. And like I said, like that was my primary focus. And so now I'm assuming that it's similar with that in, you know, cross in the emotional period. realm. Yeah, yeah. It probably it probably I would I I know that it is personally, and I would assume that it would be similar yeah. for other people. That that frequency analogy is spot on, Janine. Because very, very spot on. The passing and 
when you realize that you are the most evolved person in the room, whatever that evolution may be, emotional, financial, educational, whatever your evolution is, it's time for a new room. Thanks. And and that's hard. That's a that's a really hard transition for people to make no matter what. But yeah, once you realize, oh wow, like I'm I'm doing I'm doing better than everybody here, you, that that's not your room no more. Yeah. You know, because you, you gotta have another level. Level up. Yeah. Level, level up. up, level up, level up. Yep. That's <laughs> true. Pablo, you got it hard tonight, but you rose to Listen, I came ready. I heard the topic. As it started, I was like, oh, it's going down. I'm coming in. I'm coming prepared. Let's get it. No, how? We really got to figure out how to let people chat with us, though, because I could have used some support, my dudes. <laughs> <laughs> You need you're doing me. you're doing pretty well for your species i will say that you are you are yeah. you hold, yeah. you're holding it down for the dudes we, appre- we definitely appreciate, appreciate the the perspective because like you know like for me i've always had a lot of guy friends but that still doesn't translate to me understanding manhood that's so not, you know, I'm not a man. So it's like, you know, I've, I've heard other women like myself. They're like, oh, I've got mad guy friends. I know what that's like. It's like, no, you know, you just no, got you a don't. bunch of guy yeah. friends, you know. So <laughs> I, I'm really, you know, in the scope of everything that's going on, right, the, you know, the Me Too and all this other stuff where there's so much focus on women and how we've been wronged and how we fix that. And I'm a huge, huge advocate and proponent of that. But As am I, really, again, call me Neil, respect. <laughs> but okay. I'm really trying to be, I'm, I'm trying to be much more intentional about asking more questions of men when, yeah. when, they, when they're willing to speak. When I see a man that's willing to speak up and keep it a hundred, I'm trying to be much more intentional about hearing that narrative listening and you know and taking it in you know like not really pulling it apart unless i've got something really plausible to add to it i really want to just listen and have it be said because i don't think there are enough i've realized through like everything that's blown up in the last two years that there's not enough safe spaces for you guys to do that like That's and true. you know and so if we don't if we don't extend that grace to you i don't know that it'll ever happen because you guys can't get out of your own way unfortunately we love you but i mean that's just what it I is mean. i don't think unless women extend that grace to men to be able to step up and have those conversations i don't know that it will happen at scale that's interesting i don't, I don't know i think i, I think um I really think that it's in terms of where it's going to be prioritized in society for it to be a scale, because I think that the scale comes again, once you hit the higher levels. Um, I think we as a society train men to be providers and, you know, warriors or whatever the case may be. And so every guy has certain things in their mind kind of locked down before they're like, okay, I'm going to try to have a kid now, or okay, I'm going to try to get married or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, even the dude who, who's, you know, holding down the EBT card only, he got some kind of goals together of some kind where he would be like, oh, at this point, I'll, I'll make this move. And so, oh, God, <laughs> I think I think where society on a whole needs to come together is on moving, like training the next generation that you can think about these things sooner than later because we don't like have that a lot of right now. And it takes getting to a certain other checkpoint and you go, oh, uh, I, this guy over here, you know, him and his girl, they be having these real cool conversations and she didn't like lose it. He was, was like, oh, her bus fat, that's okay. I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's something I need to, maybe I should be cool with expressing myself too. You gotta have the right one, but you know, same, same difference. It's a, but you know, it's, it's a balancing act though. So I think part of what we never talk about, and I guess it gets placed in the whole Hotepian 
manual is this idea that we all possess both feminine and masculine energies, right? True. And so it's all spectrum. So basically when you see like, you know, there, there's the talk of like the alpha woman, I, I would consider myself she, right? Part of what I had to come to terms with in terms of how my relationships were stacking for me was how much of that masculine energy actually needs to show up in my personal relationships. So the masculine energy right. served me grandly, right, in career. In because that, yeah, that energy so is what propels you ahead. It, it's just, it gives you laser focus and you're able to go and get shit done. But mm -hmm. as a woman, and wanting a man to step up to the plate and dope and do all the things that a, a woman would want a man to do, you don't get that when you show up alpha. You get a man who is not really able to step into that masculinity because you're so alpha, you're so masculine. And so yeah. it's taken me, I, I've had to walk myself back um, to my femininity, if you will, um, understanding that you know there's times for that energy that masculine energy and then there's times not and i think that's the same balance i suspect that it might be the same balance that men have to come to like you we still do need you to be the providers we still do need you to be the warrior but we also need you to be vulnerable and the two don't have to be mutually, you know, exclusive. Like they could live in the same space, maybe not at the same time, but it's okay for you to be both. Like, in other words, we don't need to sacrifice one, one for the other. And I think that takes time and a lot of like active conversation. And I know we talked about this before in, I think it came up last week in our Taboo Acts of Love conversation about the chain of, about marriage and the institution of it and I you know whether that's marriage in the traditional sense or just some form of long-term partnership over time you have to figure out what that proper balance is for you and the person that you're with from a because um you know some shit just practically doesn't work um and if I I'm I can only dial myself back so much. So in order for us to find balance, like that's, it's just a dance that you have to keep <clears throat> adjusting until you reach a point where it flows. And then at some point that could, you know, there could be another evolution of you or the other person and you've got to adjust that again. It's not, I don't think it's as easy. I'm not sure it ever was easy, but I don't think it's as easy now nowadays to find someone who's willing to re-choreograph their life around you as it was 40, 50 years ago. I'm not sure that it ever was easy. I just think women in particular have more options yeah. than they did before because we work at, most of us work outside the home. <clears throat> um, and when that happens, you know, I don't, I, like, I don't have to, when you devolve instead of evolve, I don't have to stick around. Um, the way that I would have because I'm not financially tied to you that way so I think that you know contributes a lot to it but yeah I just think it's a it's a dance and that balance of masculine feminine and gender roles and all, all those sorts of things I think that just becomes a dance that you have to figure out over time I'm glad to see more people are willing to redefine that um, in this day and age than I think they were five ten years ago I do think it's getting better but I just hope that you know it continues to get better versus what sometimes feels like this clash of men rebelling against the notion of the evolution as though we're asking them to like betray some like code of manhood Word. that Word. hasn't been no. that hasn't worked for them that hasn't, you know, that hasn't worked for them in the history of ever so, so, like, you know. That's not true. Men, if you watch Mad Men, man, white men were winning. Again, um, we don't, I, I don't know nothing about. I don't, yeah, I, I don't, I'm on my Mariah Carey right now. I don't know her. Like, I don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't know, know, I don't know about that, that kind of manhood. I don't know manhood. nothing about that kind of manhood, yeah. But I would take it back to, I would take it back to our 
conversation on uh, like cybersecurity and data privacy, which is funny because I tweeted earlier, I was like, I wonder how many times I could get cybersecurity in here. I did think I would, but it popped up. Um, and I think uh, if we go back, like I mentioned something, but I think that the way with all this social media and how open people are with their everyday lives, that it's going to become a thing where, like you said, it's going to become the norm because you can't hide anymore. There were ways to hide 50 years ago, five, 10 years ago. There were ways to hide. You could put crazy stuff on Twitter and not worry about your employer doing a deep dive or paying one of these services to do a web crawl on what you were saying in 2007. And so now everyone is forced to figure out either, I think we have to be better at how we accept apologies, what that situation looks like, and what communication and reconciliation, uh, reconciliation looks like, but it's forcing us just the technology that we have and what we do on a regular basis. I think it's forcing everyone, male, female, whatever, to be cool with being more open. This next generation, Generation Z, they don't care about nothing. Like you can be like, I would hang out with like little cousins and stuff. And they got like one has a friend who's transgender. This other one has a friend who's got like cotton candy blue hair um but loves girls and then he's got a girl who's like a football player and they're just kind of like these are my friends and why would we think that was weird whereas when i was younger um every single one of them is getting jumped or, or teased or something you know what i mean true. So, <laughs> <laughs> so true. and so as and so i think the next generation is going to be much more in tune emotionally and I think that that millennial, I know I'm like generally on the younger end of the millennial side, but I think that we're in this weird purgatory where we still grew up where in a situation, like I remember it being okay to describe something bad as being gay. You yes. know what I mean? Like I remember that. And I remember when one day you woke up and it wasn't cool anymore. And I remember being like, but it's not derogatory it's just that's what it is and it took that rewiring and so that in between time is kind of i feel like where we are now we're in this interesting purgatory as a result of data and, and just the access of it the next generation of access because the internet i think was like that first no nah, i think you're i think you're spot on with that there was something we were mm -hmm. talking about in my house oh. recently and i think Thing. I feel like my husband referred to the person's gender and my oldest was like, why does it matter what her gender is? Ooh. And it was in that moment that I realized, holy moly, this is a whole nother generation. Whole different generation. You know, yeah. because we whole really, we are that, we are the last of those generations that refer to every single human based on attributes oh she was a black woman oh what what or people will ask you oh what was she right oh she was yeah. Asian. you know like oh what what was the scenario oh what is he gay what, what's up with that you, you know especially mm -hmm. paul you know this in west indian culture i mean it That's is that. this is we haven't caught up with the rest of the world um, where those sorts of things are concerned, you know, so yeah. um, there's a lot of things that, you know, a guy could do in which, you know, they'll, they'll be called all sorts of nicknames yep. that yep. I won't yep. mention yep. here, but yeah, you know, it, so yeah, I mean, it, you're so right. Also about. respect to LGBT community, just gonna throw that out there as well. We're just yeah. trying. Well, look, it, yeah, you do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it you know look it go it goes without saying plus, I also I you know plus. like to the point that you I, were making nobody about reconciliation and apologies and yeah. stuff like that I mean I I do think that there's some truth to there being a hypersensitivity out there you know on a lot of mm -hmm. people's parts where we're getting so sensitive that it's like any little thing is a thing you know you said boo and that's the, you know, whatever. There's the blatant mm -hmm. stuff. That All ghosts matter. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you know, there, there's the blatant stuff that we all know has a historical um, trajectory of being offensive, right? And right. for those right. things, it's quite clear we shouldn't repeat those things as we move into the 2020s in a new decade. And then there's some other stuff that's just like, you know, you want attention. So let's, 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 
let's start getting all hot and bothered about like just every little thing. And it's like, or to Paul's point, pulling up stuff from decades ago that like growth don't happen. Yeah. Like growth (laughs) doesn't happen. And like, we don't know that there, that things that are wrong now were socially acceptable at that time. Mm-hmm. And it, I get frustrated and uncomfortable <laughs> with the loss of context in a lot of these conversations that we forget that there were things that were acceptable of their, in their time. Now, I think that we can talk about the fact that they were always wrong, that they shouldn't have been acceptable in that time. But when we pull things out that we absolutely know were you know, looked upon differently and then we put them, put a modern lens on it and want to try to, you know, completely obliterate a person's existence based on that. That, that makes me uncomfortable because this is, is, I just feel like it's a slippery slope that everybody's going to fall down as you start to fast forward through time. Well, this was, this has been my thing, you know, particularly since we've had, you know, all these celebrities fall, right? You know, the Bill Cosby's, the the R. Kelly. And I'm not a fan of any of the stories necessarily around what actually happened. And I feel like, you know, if, if that's what it was, then they got their just due. But I, I, fa- I find that it's a slippery slope when we start saying, oh, well, I'm not going to watch the Cosby show and I'm not going to listen to R. Kelly, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like... <laughs> okay, cool, guess what? We finna find out about a whole host of other people that did it. And at what point are we gonna be able to separate the art from the the fallible human, right? Because we're all fallible, right? right? But do we have to dismiss the art completely because these people are social derelicts? And I mean, for the most part, if you go back in history and see some of the things, art, music, whatever it is that we've been offered up, some of the greats, they all have a little sociopathic, derelict, there's just something a little Mm -hmm. odd. It's almost like you need that thread in order to create in that way. I'm I'm almost convinced somehow, but yeah. My My problem with it too is that it's weaponized. I don't like that it's weaponized. Uh, yeah, if it was, it was, if it was a uh, with Obama, like all, all the tide rate, all shit, like if everybody was catching it, cool. But pr- my problem is that it always seems so targeted, um, and it only seems targeted at certain junctures, whatever they may be, right? It's not across the board. So, with the Cosby thing, I was like, okay, we have these different cases, seventies, eighties. You're not about to tell me all the robbers were out here getting uh you know, active consent. <laughs> You're not going to convince, but we're not pulling no. those groups out. You know, we're not, we're not looking like the Ozzy Osbournes and, and uh, all these other people who were doing similar, if not worse, because rock and roll, that was the culture. Um, mm-hmm. But old school rappers, like all these different kinds of things. I think it's really dangerous and, and unfair when it's weaponized. Um, and And I think that, at, that's what bothers me and, and makes me the most fearful moving forward. Um, especially as like a man is like, man, you know, I know that there's probably some things that I've done at some point that weren't the best and I've grown since then. But to think that some dumb I did at like 18 is going to be after being like 20, 30, 50 years in the game of growth and doing different things, that that's going to be the thing that is used to undo, whether it, Sometimes it's not even necessarily a, a matter of legality, right? The Kevin Hart situation with the Oscars, that was the thing that happened. He apologized. And then not only did he apologize, he had years of like proof living life that he was not moving that same way. He might have moved other ways that weren't great, but with that particular, he moved a different way. And it still wasn't accepted. It still was still was seen and taken out of context. It became he- um, headliney and all those kinds of things. And that kind of stuff is where I think um, the whole societal growth. And that's where I'm interested to see what the next generation does because they're so much more 
and willing to just let people be who they are and acknowledge that growth happens. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Love it. So brainy and yeah. smart. I love it. Yeah. Look at all this good vulnerability and dialogue happening. Yeah. Exactly. It's healthy. Exactly. I, I feel like we're doing something for the collective good by talking like this. I, I feel cathartic. I don't know about you. I feel lighter, like almost feathered. I do. Yes. I feel like I'm also willing to help any small business with their own issues with data vulnerabilities. <laughs> Look at the shameless kill <laughs> from the doctor. Yeah. Wow. You are so, really working. You know, look at you. I'm, I'm working today. You I'm have working. you have created a monster with this with the pitch. You created a pitch monster. <laughs> no. I Evidently. cannot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, ABC, since... always be closing. No. Um, but but no, I I really appreciate this was this was a much. Uh, this wasn't as tough a topic as I thought it was going to be. I was like, I don't know where it's going to go. And uh, also, I did find that there is like a little chat thing here. So yeah, I'll figure is. out how to, I, you, I can start getting some male support in these streets. <laughs> I can't even. Yeah, no, see, we, we're we only, you're going to evolve like tremendously by the time this year ends just you know oh boy just by virtue of hanging with us we got you you about to be oh, like i appreciate the, it you're gonna be the prize of your 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 crew the prize of my crew then i gotta get a new crew don't do that i like my friends <laughs> <laughs> but they may not be going where you're going pertinent to what we talked about you know i know listen your but... vibe attracts your tribe that's real that's real true. That's real, real talk. That's real talk. I think that's across, that's across the board. That's across yeah. the board. Totally. So is that all you have to say about your sales pitch? What else you got going on, good doc? Don't you want to Oh, that was a joke. The that webinar? was a good sales pitch. But I do, I do have a webinar coming out uh, on Tuesday, hosting a live webinar. We're talking about how we can use cybersecurity um, in our marketing plan to help increase sales. So you're going to get some ROI on on the money that you spend protect your data so it's not all pointless it's not all just hoping and wishing and put it off till later you can actually use some of those dollars and stretch them in the marketing space nice. love it yeah still it's all still black blogs matter over here uh, we got about a week left to go on the micro blog challenge and the whole month of March um, on the writing and vlogging end of things. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this topic in March because we start to get into more specifically black women and, you know, our place. Yeah, so we're doing double duty. We're going to do some women's history and we're going to do Let's some women's related talk, topics. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then my podcast will be launching within the next seven days. So Leading in Color podcast on Instagram, Leading in Color on Twitter and Facebook. Um, follow me at the Buzz on HR for all of these updates. 2019 is shaping up wonderfully. So let's, let's go. I'm with it. it. Let's go. Lovely. Lovely. What is going on in my corner? Well, we have a sponsored show next week. Yes, come on, sponsors. Sponsorships. Yes. You know, I have have put in the grit and the work to get these things. It's a beautiful thing to have a nice little sponsor. So we'll we'll talk like, you know, human performance and get a little higher than human performance. Yay. I know nothing about that. I'm going to talk real (laughs) ignorant next (laughs) week. <laughs> oh my god. I'd be, I'd be like, of course you're supposed to have data and statistical analysis. That's how robots work. I can't even deal. Uh-uh. So yeah, we'll do that. Um today, funny enough, I I had like a I'll have to tell you about it, Pablo. I had a good meeting with a development team here in New York. Nice. Okay. I feel, okay. I feel like, you know, sometimes, sometimes we let shit rock. I had kind of let that 
the, the tech thing rock a minute because, you know, 2018 was tumultuous in that way. And then God said, no, I'm going to have a development company stalk you. And stalk they did, literally, to the wow. point that I, okay, I, yeah, to the oh, point God. where I had to say yes to the meeting. And it, um, you know, I feel like a, a, a fire was lit under me again. I'm like, well, now you're going to put me to work. So let me get back to this idea of God and stuff. Nice. Hey, I love it. Let's go. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. It's, you know, there, at some point we'll have to have a discussion about what it's like, this tech entrepreneur Damn. Listen, I'm cool with that. Bruh, I got a lot. It's a, it's yeah, I'm going to drop the name. I'm going to drop the name of that whack investment app too. Yeah, it, it's just. I'm not evolved. Uh -oh. I'm not evolved yet. I dropped names. I'm still petty. I'm petty still Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on it. Petty Pablo. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, it is not for the faint of heart, but somebody in the upper echelons of our existence wants me to bring this thing to fruition. So I'm excited. I think it's, it's a good on idea. Keeping on. Do it. I know. Do support. it. Do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. This was fun. We will be back next week with a whole nother topic. And you guys take care. Have a great rest of your week. Good night, everybody. Bye.